Tonight, President Buhari assures Nigerians of his quick return to work as Nigeria Governors Forum plans to visit London. The responsibility that privilege and power place upon us is to do our utmost to change the current bleak narrative. Commonwealth Speakers of Parliament converge on Abuja as the 16th conference gets underway. Federal government al alerts on plots to derail anti-corruption efforts of government, asks Nigerians and foreigners alike to disregard fake letters purportedly from the Presidential Advisory Committee against corruption. And colloquium on tackling radicalization and violent extremism ends in Burkina Faso, Ouagadougou. Very good evening to you. Thank you for joining us for NTA Network News. I am Elizabeth Banu here in Abuja and Jennifer Igwe is in Lagos. A delegation of the Nigeria Governors Forum is scheduled to visit President Muhammad Buhari in the United Kingdom on Wednesday. The special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adeshina, who announced this at a media briefing, said the chairman of the forum, Governor Abdulaziz Yari Abubakar of Zamfara State, is leading the delegation. State House correspondent Adam Osambo reports. The delegation comprising five governors from the Governing All Progressives Congress and two from the PDP were selected from each of the six geopolitical zones of the country. The meeting with President Muhammad Buhari is scheduled for 3 p.m. at Abuja House in London. The visit is a, is a goodwill visit and nothing more than that. I, I believe that uh, Nigerians in various positions had yearned, you know, to go meet the president, and uh, at some point, uh, this obviously had not been permitted. But uh, given the changed circumstances, I'm sure that the president himself would be very delighted to to see people coming from the six geopolitical zones, you know, coming to convey the goodwill of Nigerians to him. So this is the right time to visit the president because the news is that he is recovering and recovering well. I'm sure you are aware of a letter he just wrote to the African, uh, African Union chairman mm. when he told him that he's making very good progress. Mm. So this is the proper time for him to then receive delegations. Mr. Adeshina also clears the air on speculations about the possible return date of President Muhammad Buhari to Nigeria. If anybody is given a timeline, that person may have information that we don't have yet. But the information at our disposal is that the president will return mm. as soon as his doctors mm. give him the go-ahead. The presidential spokespersons also used the forum to give an update on the ongoing consultations between the government's interministerial committee led by acting president Emil Shibaju as well as the Panaja Delta Forum on issues of development in the oil producing states saying a meeting will be held next week where reports from both sides will be submitted for deliberation. And some of the highlights uh, that will be discussed at the meeting is, uh, uh, for instance, the issue of modular refineries, which we hope that uh, starting from August, we do the groundbreaking for the first set of modular refineries. Uh, regarding Ogoni cleanup, we are also going to give an update of what has been happening. Also to be discussed at the meeting is the plan to commence academic activities at the Maritime University in October this year, as a number of courses have already been approved by the NUC, while the Vice Chancellor is under instruction to submit a comprehensive takeoff budget for approval. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, President Mohamed Buhari has written to thank the President of Guinea, Alpha Conde, for the nationwide prayers held last week by Guineans for his recovery and good health. The presidential spokesman Femi Adishino in a statement indicates that President Buhari in a letter dated July 24, 2017, had earlier made a phone call to Conde, who is the current chairman of the Assemblies of Heads of State and Government of the African Union. President Buhari says he is making good progress and as soon as doctors advise, he will return to duties and continue serving Nigerians who elected him and are praying daily for his recovery. 
The statement adds that President Buhari had also accepted his nomination as leader of the 2018 AU theme on the fight against corruption, which came from African leaders at the 29th session of the Assembly of Heads of State and Government of the AU in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, on 4th July 2017. Acting President Yemi Oshimbajo wants elected political office holders to effectively use the tenure of office to meet the yearnings of the people, urging them to shun unnecessary wrangling that could slow down their assignments. The acting president, while declaring open the 16th Commonwealth Speakers and Presiding Officers Conference, Africa region in Abuja, reiterates the need for the elites to brace in solving the challenges confronting humanity, especially Africans. State House correspondent Jide Onifade reports. Acting President Yemi Oshimbajo notes that conflicts, corruption, and weak institutions have ensured that the largest numbers of the poor and deprived are in Africa and other developing world. There's a link to failure of leadership. The leadership positions which we occupy is a short lease that Providence and the electorate have given us to shape the present and determine the future of millions and the generations that will be born to them. It would be foolish indeed to think that is an occasion for self-aggrandizement or the pursuit of selfish interests. The responsibility that privilege and power place upon us is to do our utmost to change the current bleak narratives and projections for our nations and our continent and the world. The acting president stresses the need for both the executive and the legislature to work together in bettering the lives of the people. The burden that the privilege of leadership places upon us is that our tenured positions in the executive and the legislature must not be wasted on conflicts and division. The problems are simply too grave. The lives and livelihoods of millions depend on our cooperation, and we simply cannot afford to fail. It is a time where we need to seize this opportunity while the world is looking to Africa. That we come together and facilitate a roadmap that will lay the foundation for future generations. Yet, all of Africa's problems, be they corruption, social, political, economic, etc., can only be solved by strong institutions. It is therefore the duty of parents across Africa to free our people from the shackles of strong men by ensuring that strong institutions replace the latter. Speaker Yakubu Dugera was commended for successfully steering the affairs of the association since November 2015, when the 15th conference in Accra, Ghana, approved the National Assembly of Nigeria as the 2016 host. In Abuja, Jude Onifade, NT News. Nigeria's global rating in labor administration may have improved remarkably under the Buhari administration with the latest rating by the International Labor Organization. The country representative of the International Labor Organization, Denis Zulu, gave the country a pass mark at the opening of a two-day mini-conference organized by the Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment for senior management staff of the ministry. Ado Adamu also completes the report. The current administration approach on labor matters has repositioned the country on the path of global endorsement. For the International Labor Organization, Nigeria's consistency in managing and promoting labor-related issues cannot be overlooked, especially with the return of Nigeria to the International Labor Organization Governing Board and the National Employment Policy recently approved by the federal government. So therefore Nigeria is a big player in the ILO, and therefore Nigeria is a trendsetter in the ILO. So it's important that Nigeria shows the good practice that can be emulated not only by African countries, but countries across the world. Under my leadership as a young minister and as part of the current administration's effort to reposition the economy and make it an uh, investor's destination, our president, President Muhammad Buhari, has declared the Ministry of Labor as one of the frontline economic ministries. The two-day mini-conference at the instance of the Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment has its theme, Improving Labor Enforcement Services in Nigeria, the role of the labor and factory officers. In Abuja, 
Adwa Demwalso, NTA News. The federal government is committed to ensuring that Nigeria moves in the same direction with other countries in research, innovation and application of science and technology to drive a diversified economy. The Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Obonaya Onu, stated this at the fourth international workshop on application of information and communication technology in education, healthcare and agriculture going on in Abuja. Tim Dumandubisi reports. Countries that have few natural resources have grown their economies just by deploying information and communication technology at every sector. For instance, the use of geographical information and farm management information systems improve farmers' yields, thereby ensuring food security. Nigeria, in its drive to diversify the economy, is embracing ICT to explore these benefits. That's why this conference is seeking to strengthen the capacity of software developers and researchers who design practical applications in health, education, and agriculture to ensure efficiency in ICT use. Serious talk should be given to how the cutting-edge technology of telemedicine can assist in promoting access to reliable and affordable health care. The government is working to ensure that e-learning and learning management systems based on the Nigerian curricula are developed to complement the effort of our teachers. ICT have evolved to such an extent that to grow genetically enhanced crops through superior monitoring techniques is no more a dream. The Ministry of Science and Technology, in collaborating with its partners to organize this conference believes ICT will help the country achieve sustainable development goals. In Abuja, Chimdema Ndubisi, NTA News. The Senate has started close by close consideration on review of the 1999 Constitution. National Assembly correspondent Waziri Zayanu said items from the report have earlier been adopted by the joint session of the committees of both chambers of the National Assembly. Commencement of the debate on the final passage of the 1999 Constitution is just a process and nothing has been approved yet. Presenting the report of the Committee of Constitution Review for consideration, Deputy Senate President Iki Ekuremaru called for meaningful contributions from legislators. In such various contributions, senators touch on issues like sovereign wealth fund, local government autonomy, and age limit for elective political positions. There was no age limit assigned to those running for councillors in Nigeria. If you really want an attorney general to be independent, you must give them first line charge. I would like to specifically mention the novel initiative of moving the stamp duties in the general post service column into the concurrent list. Why are we congesting the provisions of the Constitution by including the, the civil defense? This is a, a review that will bring about a much more better budget process, better local government administration to strengthen democracy at the state level. For the debate on the 1999 constitutional amendment will continue on Wednesday. The Senate also have received Request from Acting Vice President Yemi Oshibanjo for environment of funds from various budgets to fund federal government priority projects. The total amount of environment being proposed is $135 billion, $644 million, 18,749 naira. Meanwhile, Conference Committee report on the Nigerian Peace Corps has been passed by the Senate, while the report on the Committee on Education and UBEC on compulsory universal basic education has been laid. From the National Assembly, Zilzayan, NTA News. Still at the National Assembly, the House of Representatives is considering an amendment bill that seeks to ensure sanity and safety on federal highways in Nigeria by increasing fines prescribed under the Act. The bill has passed for second reading. The legislators also resolved to investigate what it described as invasion of Igbatui Jesha campus of Ocean State University by personnel of the Nigerian Air Force Safety Institute. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Nkwo reports. Two members of the House of Representatives, Taiwa Kintola and Omorige Obaide Ihama, are sponsoring a bill that seeks to prohibit any activity that leads to blockage of federal highways. We remember the issue of the Shiites and the military in Zaria 
We know what that costs lives. And that what you are trying to do is even the, a component part of a bill that has gone through the second reading of the House. The bill sponsored by Representative Mahmoud Mohammed from Niger State for an act to establish the Pharmaceutical Technologies and Pharmacy Technicians Board and the one by Representative Tony Moye from Anambra State for an act to establish Federal University of Education in Sube were also passed for second reading. Two matters of urgent public importance were considered, moved by Representative Owodige Ewatai on the need for the Managing Director of ExxonMobil to appear before the House and brief members on steps to clean up oil spillage in communities in Ibino, local government area of Akwaibom State, and the motion to investigate alleged brutalization of Nigerian workers by soldiers at the Idorama LMA Fertilizer and Chemical Limited Company, Potakot, moved by Representative Babatunde Kolawole. And also to pay adequate compensation to the affected communities. Of the fact that men of the Nigerian army are meant to protect the country against external aggression and not to be used at will by expatriates against Nigerians. The need to reconstruct the collapsed burial bridge and construction of roads linking Bayo Kwaya, Kusar Biu of Borno State, moved by Representative Mukhtar Betara Aliu from the state, was adopted. The Conference Committee of the National Assembly submitted its report on the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act Amendment Bill. Four reports were considered. This includes a report of the House Adult Committee on Development and Standardization of Manuals and Templates for the House, and the report by the House Committee on Health Institutions for the Cancellation of the Public-Private Partnership and Joint Venture Agreement between the University of Abuja Teaching Hospital and Crystal Troop Nigeria Limited to ensure due process. From the National Assembly, Ignatius, Nkwo, NTN News. The federal government has raised an alarm over an orchestrated plan to discredit the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption, PACAC, and by extension, the government's anti-corruption efforts using fraudsters and their ilk. In a statement on outstanding pre federal government external contracts debt, and a form to be filled for that purpose are being sent to unsuspecting persons. This is with a view to extorting money from them and to portray the country's highest advisory committee against corruption in bad light. The information minister said the president has not mandated PACAC payment of some outstanding contracts, contract debts as contained in the letter in question. Neither has the federal government approved the disbursement of $850 million in the 2017 budget for payment of the so-called external contract debt, urging Nigerians and foreigners alike to disregard such letters. The statement adds that Professor Sage and all members of his committee are men and women of proven integrity who will never allow the committee to be used for any activity that is not within its mandate. You can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. Still to come on NTA Network News, a new regime for hard coverage as NTA signs agreement with NACON. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a moment. From what we have seen, we have the capacity which we can rapidly develop or feed in ourselves. If we don't import rice, we stop importing corn and other grains. Nigeria will have plenty of money to invest into developing industries, especially manufacturing, textiles and so on, and develop iron and steel and complement the infrastructure development. So really, the opportunities are virtually limitless, and we are very, very aware of this, and we are prepared to explore it to the fullest. Shortcut. I didn't mind my money. Now, cheap, cheap one, I did buy. 
standard, we sign. Now to buy cheap one. <laughs> hey, now what can keep on for my yard? A cheap building material where we take build my office. I did say I deserve money. Office building collapse and fire burn my house. Hey, hey. You don't see what happened to Mr. Shortcut? Well, Standards Organization of Nigeria, SON, don't ready for action and say enough of pain, loss, and wastage. And if you see product where no day correct, call the SON office when near you or SON app desk. Standards Organization of Nigeria, improving life through standards. What about Indom in this is not my indomie. Please, sir, it's not indom. Don't call it indom. Sir, the taste is the difference. The difference is in the taste. That's why my brothers, my mommy, my daddy, and I all enjoy admission. So very delicious indomie. <laughs> the difference is the taste. Taste is the difference. Yes. Difference is in the taste. Nothing tastes like mine in the middle. <laughs> Indomie noodles. Tasty nutrition. Good for you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. His Royal Highness, the Emir of Fika and Chairman, Yoba State Council of Chiefs, and Haji Muhammadu Abali Ibn Muhammadu Idrisa, cordially invites the general public to the 314 million naira appeal fund for the restructuring, remodeling, and expansion of Potiskum Central Mosque. Date Saturday, July 29, 2017. Venue Emir of Fika's Palace, Potiskum. Time 10 a.m. Special guest of honor, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Yoba State, Al Haji Ibrahim Gaida. Guest of honor, Al Haji Muhammadu Umaru Jibrila Bindo. Barista Muhammadu Abdullahi Abubakar, Al Haji Kashim Shatima, Al Haji Ibrahim Hassan Dankwambo, Architect Darius Dixon Ishaku, Chief Host Al Haji Muhammadu Abali Ibn Muhammadu Idrisa, Emir of Fika, Royal Father of the Day, His Eminence Al Haji Muhammad Saad Abubakar the Third. Chief Lodger, Al Haji Aliko Dangote, Chairman of the Occasion, Malam Adamu Chiroma, Mada Kinfika, Guest Speakers, Sheikh Tijani Bala Kalara Wikano, Sheikh Muhammad Kabiru Haruna Gombe, Announcer, Chairman, Organizing Committee, Al Haji Baba Baba, Demasan Infika. <laughs> The Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing. Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Thank you for staying with us on NTA Network News. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Buratay, says adoption of the concept of the Multinational Joint Task Force by the Nigerian Army is responsible for successes recorded in counterinsurgency operations. He said this while on operational visit to Lake Chad Basin Commission in Jemena, Chad, where he received the Multinational Joint Task Force. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa has details. The Lake Chad Basin Commission is the administrative arm of the Multinational Joint Tax Force, MNJTF, while the tax force is a combination of mostly troops from member nations. These countries are united in the fight against their common enemy, the Boko Haram terrorist group. Uh, while we are celebrating These cautions the focus on the need for more support from the UN, AU and other nations to enhance the current humanitarian and peace building process. We are in a much better position now than three years ago. And uh, given the renewed commitment uh, of uh, the government of Nigeria, headed by President Muhammadu Buhari, I think his uh, personality and uh, diplomacy 
will weigh on the other member countries to improve their funding. At the event, the Chief of Army Staff, who was awarded MNJTF Medal for being the visionary pioneer force commander, do now is to uh, increase the level of stabilization that is due to be brought on, uh, into the entire region. So Aside the provision of about 70% of the running cost of the MNJTF, Nigeria has the largest number of troops in the force that has about five major contributing nations. From Njamaina Chad, Ismail Musa, NTA News. And a two-day colloquium aimed at developing regional strategy in tackling radicalization and violent extremism in the Sahel has ended in Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso. Apart from expression of desire for sharing of intelligence, Nigeria's experience in the fight against Boko Haram terrorists, the multinational joint task force coalition, the process of resettlement of victims of insurgency featured in the discussion. Although the colloquium aimed at the G5 Sahel countries, Nigeria, a member of the Lake Chad Basin Commission, had an impressive non-governmental non representation. Shagun Laule earlier had a conversation with Ahmed Shehu, the chairman, network of civil society organizations, Borno State, who attended the colloquium. Major decisions yeah. arrived at towards putting an end to the menace. This is a prelude to the previous three uh, symposium that was held in different African countries. And now all the key stakeholders who are on board now to develop a to develop a framework to act now finally on how uh, terrorism and extremism can be prevented and then can be countered. So basically this is the essence of the workshop. And then the division certainly yeah, for everyone to be on board so that there are supposed to be a synergy between different African countries, the security agencies, the media, the civil society, the government should come along together to find a common ground that violent extremism can be countered. Still talking security, the sixth summit of the Association of Professional Bodies of Nigeria is holding in Abuja with a charge on Nigerians to make meaningful suggestions towards addressing the security challenges in the country. Salio Abdullahi reports that representatives of over 30 professional bodies are attending the two-day summit. The Association of Professional Bodies of Nigeria is an umbrella body of over 30 professional institutions that is providing effective platform for transmitting to government the comprehensive views of professionals on matters of public interest. Participants at this summit acknowledged intervention programs by government to ensure peace and security in Nigeria and hoped that deliberations here will complement such efforts to enhance unity of the country. And from the content of the discussions that are going on here, we intend to develop uh, documents that will present to lawmakers. What we can do is for us to walk the talk in sustaining peace. There's nothing as uh, straightforward as dialogue. Government must embrace dialogue. The summit is expected to come up with a policy document which will be transmitted to relevant organs of government towards building a united Nigeria. Those of us in the media, we are already doing a great work. We are taking giant strides in the developmental efforts of this country. At the NTA, we are leading. We provide the window that through which the world sees Nigeria. Because um, uh, we've not been handling things uh, uh, the way we should handle them. So that's why there is continuous uh, outcry in terms of uh, uh, dialogue. The theme of the summit is peace and security for sustainable national development, a multi-professional approach. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullahi, NTA News. Governor Mohammed Abdullahi Abubakar of Bauchi State has again restated the commitment of the Bauchi State government to support the Nigerian Air Force and other security agencies in the state. The governor stated this at the inauguration of some projects executed by the Nigerian Air Force at the 251 base group, Bauchi. Adamu Harun Adams has details. The 251 base and the Special Operations Command, Bauchi, were established in 2016 as part of efforts to fortify security in the Northeast and the neighboring states. 
since establishment, the command has been witnessing accelerated infrastructural development and has been enjoying immense support from the Muhammad Abubakar led administration. Commissioning a primary school and electronic shooting range, officers and non commissioned officers' messes, among other projects. Governor Mohammed Abubakar of Bauchi State expresses gratitude to President Muhammad Buhari and the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, for extending the presence of the Nigerian Air Force to Bauchi State. Electronic shooting range, the first of its kind in the northeastern sub region, and not many of it uh, exist in the whole of Nigeria. You have seen that also. And then the infrastructure that is fast developing around the, the, the base. The Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, expresses appreciation to President Muhammad Bukhari for the support he gives to Nigerian armed forces and commends Governor Muhammad Abubakar and the people of Bauchi State for their support. Nigerian Air Force equally places a lot of premium on the welfare of its personnel. Hence, Following the establishment of Special Operations Command and the Nigerian Air Force Base Bauchi, I directed that befitting messages for our officers, airmen, airwomen be built on the base. He further stresses commitment of the Nigerian Air Force to its constitutional responsibility. Earlier, the service chief paid courtesy visits to Governor Mohammed Abubakar at the government house and the Emir of Bauchi, Rulwan Suleiman Adamu, at his palace, where he solicited more supports. In Bauchi, Adamu Haruna Adams, NTA News. An agreement to cover the 2017 Hajj operation live from Saudi Arabia has been signed between the National Hajj Commission and the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. Kolo Mohammed was there, and now reports. While underscoring the importance of sufficient coverage for Hajj operations, the chairman, National Hajj Commission, described Hajj operations as an important national assignment as well as a religious obligation. It will be aired and covered in such manner that members of the public will have a better understanding of the Hajj uh, from the perspective that it should be. Director General, Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Yakubu Ibn Muhammad, assured the Commission and other Hajj service providers of good coverage using the wide reach of the NTA. We are not stopping at this, you know, ju just at this one. You know, NTA is a national carrier. NTA uh, belongs to every Nigerian. NTA is going to, you know, extend this further to our Christian brothers and sisters, you know, who also... Uh, go out on pilgrimage, you know, I mean, who also perform the pilgrimage. But this is the first time that NTA is embarking on such an exercise. Some partners expressed willingness to key into the new innovation. The partnership, I see it as a move in the right direction. And it will keep everybody on toes. All stakeholders are optimistic of a smooth 2017 Hajj operations. From the National Hajj Commission, Abuja, Kolo Muhammad, NTA News. You're watching NTA Network News. Time to join Jennifer in Lagos for more reports. It's over to you, Jennifer. Thank you, Elizabeth. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. The federal government will continue to support private sector initiatives aimed at harnessing the huge potential in the nation's inland waterways with a view to enhancing economic stability of the country. Minister of Transportation Ruth Timi Amechi stated this at the second international conference and exhibition organized by the National Inland Waterways in Lagos. Musa Toliat completes the report. Transport. Ruth Timi Amechi said, given the huge potentials in inland waterways of the country with a vast coastline, territorial waters, exclusive economic zone, spanning 200 nautical miles, the economic benefits derivable from investments in the maritime sector is unprecedented. Out of 500,000 cubic meters, listen, they have been able to dredge 200,000. That's a huge achievement. Fragment is also looking inward to so ensure that we put enough security measures in place. Having declared the Newa exhibition opened, the minister thereafter commissioned two Newa Havista vessels to demonstrate the commitment of the federal government to remove impediments on the nation's inland waterways. With the theme, Improving navigability and inland port development for sustainable investment on Nigerian waterways, 
The conference presented a platform for maritime stakeholders to share ideas on interconnectivity for multimodal transport system. We are putting up our facilities, starting with the Onisha port, very soon for concession. We are working on the amendment of our act, which would uh, reposition new ones. It's very, very vital to the development of the waterways or to have effective rail system. By the time all these things come, you will see that there is competition, uh, the transport costs will go down. When you uh, maintain the good navigable condition, this is a great pull for economy. A panel of discussion on the theme of the conference and the unveiling of a book on NIWA's first international conference in 2014, he rounded this year's event in Lagos, Musa Toliat, NTA News. Stakeholders in the public and private broadcast industry converged on Lagos to discuss ways of optimizing new media opportunities and managing electronic vandalism in the country. The workshop organized by the African Media Network in conjunction with the Nigerian Press Council is also to reflect on why and how the new media is changing the conscience of the world in many positive and negative ways. Kenneth Beluge completes the story. The 2014 Social Media Week report 2016 shows that there are 79.8 million active social media users in Africa and Nigeria is said to be at the very forefront. Social media, on the other hand, is not without its flaws. The rise of what is now aptly labeled fake news highlighted the disadvantages of a decentralized media platform. It is in view of this that the Nigerian Press Council, in collaboration with the African Media Network, organized a capacity building workshop to equip key officials saddled with the new media management responsibilities with the capacity and skills required for effective and improved productivity. The idea behind this is to see how we can stimulate the consciousness and thinking of our people. If people use social media effectively and positively, of course, we'll all be happy. The traditional media should work hard, though it is difficult, to win and win the people away from the social media. Speakers examined the challenges and opportunities for the new media. If we hazard a guess to how this will go, then our country would join the platform of the world a lot faster and a lot more positive ways. We have a law uh, that criminalizes all online actions that are undesirable. It is expected that the enactment of cybercrime acts by the federal government will force public broadcasters to make informed decisions on how best to use the social media for the good of society. In Lagos, Ken Igbeluge, NTA News. You're still on to NTA Network News. More reports ahead after this time out. Please stay tuned. Please stay tuned. Hi Tracy, what's my flight number? Tracy, do you have a phone I can use? This is so old school. Try this. There's no network on here. What about this one? Seriously? Does anybody have 4G here? <coughs> Hello, madam. Hi. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Wow, it's ultra fast. Of course, it's Glow 4G LTE turbocharged. <laughs> and you are super fly. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of your evening. You too. Bye. Glow 4G LTE. I need to sit next to you to fly. If these data plans are available to all new customers and existing customers who renew their plans, dial star triple seven hash. Welcome to the new speed of life. This must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's what LG wants you to see. Just what we see now through our technology. LG OLED TV. Cadbury Born Vita now comes in an attractive new 500 gram refill pack. Simply open and reseal after use to retain the chocolatey and creamy taste. Cadbury Born Vita, prepare to win. Best concert of your life? Don't just stay cool, stay refreshed with an ice cold Coca Cola. Pick your lane, solo or bigger boy. Taste the feeling. 
The Administrative Staff College of Nigeria, ASCON, is organizing a national workshop with the theme, Strengthening Public Procurement for Improved Performance, the Role of Specialists. Expected participants of the workshop are Director Generals of State Procurement Agencies, Directors of Procurement, Chief Executive Officers in the MDAs and NGOs involved in procurement. Date. Monday 24th to Friday 29th September 2017. Venue, Ascon Complex, Topo Badagri. Workshop fee, some 5,000 Naira, excluding lodging and feeding. Mode of payment, account name, Ascon e-collection account. Account number, 023-005-586-1019. Payable at any commercial bank. For further information, please contact GA Afolayo. You can also visit www.ascon.gov.ng. Announcer, Director General Ascon. Reorganized, trained, and fully equipped, we are the new improved Nigeria Police Force. We fight crime. We bust syndicates. Whatever the crime, wherever the hideout, the Nigeria Police Force will get you busted. Stop kidnapping, armed robbery, murder. This is NTA Network News. Central Bank of Nigeria Monetary Policy Committee, NPC, retains all monetary indicators for the sixth consecutive time. Details with Vivian Idekbafo on Business News. It's good to have you join us on the business news. The decision by the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria at its 257th meeting on Tuesday to leave all monetary policy indicators unchanged stems from the desire to further strengthen the positive developments that have continued in stabilizing the economy. Consequently, the MPC retained the monetary policy rate at 14% and cash reserves ratio at 22.5%. Liquidity ratio remains at 30%, while the asymmetric window stays unchanged at plus 200 and minus 500 basis points around the MPR. Easing now or reducing interest rates will pull the real interest rate further to a negative territory, which is a disincentive to investment. Those are some of the fundamental issues. A disincentive to investment will, will hurt our stability that we've so far achieved in the foreign exchange market, and there's a need for us to ensure that this does not happen. The MPC is optimistic that the implementation of the 2017 budget and the economic recovery and growth plan will further strengthen growth and stimulate employment. Turning now to the capital market in what can be described as one of the strong positive indicators for Nigeria, the All Share Index Tuesday closed on a positive note. It's appreciated by 0.32% to extend the market's gaining streak by 2.54%. Market breadth closed positive with 27 gainers against 18 losers, while market capitalization closed at 12.085 trillion naira. Well, that concludes business news at this time. Now to the rest of the bulletin. Thank you. Nigeria's recovery from present economic and social challenges, as well as its aspiration for development, will only materialize when education is accorded the needed priority. Central Bank Governor Godwin Emefiele stated this during a homecoming visit to his alma mater, the University of Nigeria and Suka, where he presented a lead paper at the Department of Economics. Shikiola Ipinai reports. In 1980 and 1986, Godwin Ifai Emefele was a student of the University of Nigeria, Onsuka, where he obtained bachelor's degree in banking and finance in 1984 and master's degree in finance in 1986. It was indeed a homecoming as Governor Emefele walked through the economics department of the University of Onsuka. The welcome was warm as Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Benjamin Chukuma Ozumba, and the entire university community rolled out the drums and broke the cola. 
to receive one of its own described as a worthy product of its academic history. Obviously highly elated, Governor Imefele blushed with pride to the warm reception. We seized the opportunity to um, look at what we left behind and with some sort of nostalgic feeling, there is this, this feeling that we still have a lot to do. We are happy that our alumni, uh, they have come from different walks of life to um, come back to their base. With the realization of the importance of education to the development of a country, Imefele said the Apex Bank is involved in various intervention programs to boost education system through research and innovations. From the University of Nigeria, Onsuka, Shikiola, Ipenayi, NTNE. The Nigerian Society of Engineers, NSE, has commended the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, for stabilizing the supply and distribution of petroleum products and crashing the price of diesel across the country. NSC President Otis Anyeji gave this commendation when he paid a visit to the group managing director, NNPC, Dr. Mekantibaru, in Abuja. The society is deeply appreciative to NNPC for its joint venture programs, most of which have produced scholarship opportunities for university students of engineering and also other courses. All facets of life, the engineering profession is featuring both in producing the luxury goods and essential items that are required for life to continue in this modern era. Health officials in review meeting 2016 and 2017 CMS outbreak in Sokoto. Zainab brings us details. Over to you, Zainab. And welcome to Sokoto. Let detection of outbreak, inadequate funding as well as slow and tedious application for vaccines have been identified as key factors that led to the recent outbreak of cerebrospinal meningitis in Nigeria. Sheikh Mohammed Deti reports that these and other issues dominated discussions at the 2016-2017 CSM outbreak after action response review meeting in Sokoto. The report. Zafara, Sokoto, Niger, Katsina, Yobi, and Kebi states are the six most affected states, with Zafara and Sokoto taking 80% of the outbreak, while the remaining four states shared 20%. Statistics presented indicates that over 14,000 cases were recorded. National Coordinator, Nigerian Center for Disease Control, Dr. Chikwe Ikikwezizu, said data collected remains the guiding principle to adequate response. The review meeting, according to him, is to balance the way forward. Our role is to support the states in the high-risk uh, zone to be able to detect and respond. As National Primary Healthcare Development Agency challenged states to ensure early preventive measures. Dr. Adam Nuhu, Director of Northwest Zone, and Representative of the Executive Director, Dr. Faisal Shuaib, said they have reached advanced stage of checkmating cases of outbreak in the country. Commissioner for Health, Dr. Balada Bishohu Kakale, said Sokoto State recorded one of the best emergency response intervention with robust surveillance system. The traditional leadership through the Southern Council, we have been working very hard together to get community also mobilized, let them be aware about the dangers of outbreaks, they shut down our lives. Presentations were made by the states affected in Sokoto, Shio Muhammad Dati, NTA News. And as it from here, it's back to Elizabeth. Thank you, Zaino. Nasarawa State Government is to commence the rebuilding of the massacre market along Kefi Abuja Road that was recently gutted by fire. Governor Umaru Tanko Almakura said this when he visited the market to assess the level of destruction. Joshua Ojito has details. The cause of the inferno that started around 1 a.m. midnight is still unknown and it destroyed over 2,000 shops with one trader who lost his life as a result of shock from the disaster. So all my two shops I get here, no pick anything, if it's one of them burn. If they plead government, any help, no amount is small. While at the market to sympathize with the affected traders, Governor Umaru Tenko al Makura announced plan by the state government to reconstruct the market in order to address challenge of congestion in the market. 
In the meantime, all the affected traders will be relocated to the newly remodeled Karu International Market, while government donated 10 million naira to the affected traders to enable them to start up their businesses. We are going to ensure sanity in the operations of this market. Government will take a survey of the areas so affected with a view to helping and supporting the traders in putting back their shops immediately. Governor Al Mukura notes that as part of government drive to boost commercial activities, thereby encouraging small and medium scale enterprises, government has constructed model markets in Lafia, Akwanga, Kefi and Karu to provide conducive environment for traders. In Karu, Joshua Ojito, NTA News. Flooding wreaks havoc, more havoc in Edo State and Agatha in Benin brings us details. Over to you, Agatha. Thank you, Elizabeth. Good evening and welcome to Benin. Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Ogunaya Ono, says the federal government is poised to accelerate the pace of development and called on effective deployment of values of science, technology, and innovation. This was at the flag off of the Waste to Wealth program in Akure with Ondo State as the pilot for the Southwest Geopolitical Zone. Doris Solomoko reports. I said that the Waste to Wealth program will enable the conversion of waste to valuable economic goods and services to help create wealth and jobs. He said it will reduce poverty and stimulate national consciousness in the power of science and technology as an important instrument for nation building. I am confident that it will make the difference in our search for a new Nigeria. The message of the Ministry of Science and Technology is good music to the ears of the people of Adia State. Considering our financial difficulty, particularly at the present time, he said citizens of the state are ready to learn how to participate in the innovative scheme in Akure, Doris Unmoko, NTN News. Nigerians living around the riverbanks and flood-prone areas in Otuko, Osumegwe, and Udaba in Isako Central Local Government Area have been advised to relocate immediately to avert any loss of life. These followed the destruction of farmlands and submerging of hundreds of houses in flood because of the increased rains in the area. Udwakobong Achibong has the report. The majority of residents of Otuko community have been rendered homeless. Their farmlands and crops lost to flood, leaving them with no hope for food in the coming months. Commissioner for Youth and Special Duties, Mika Amonakai, on an on-the-spot assessment of the damage done on behalf of the state government, promised the people of government intervention. We we'll look through what we need to do as quickly as we can so that as the river is uh, you know, uh, picking up and uh, taking over communities on a daily basis will begin to evac 